said you cannot defeat Biafra. I thought I was talking about the battlefield, on the battlefield. Well, that was involved as well. It's a mistake keeping an Andrikano in prison, I believe. Uh, in fact, kidnapped him. There's no other word in okay, the yes. first place. That's true. He had a right to pursue his cause anywhere. Hello guys, welcome once again to Think Tank TV. Now, some time ago, someone asked me a question about what my take is about the continued detention of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra in person of Inamdi Kanu. Now, when I gave the person my response, I went back to begin to think, was I actually right? Did I actually give the right answers? After all, who am I? Any government can wake up and say, what do you know about international relations? What do you know about national security? But guess what? Just a few hours ago, Professor Wole Shoinka, the Nobel laureate, was interviewed about the continued detention of Namde Kano and surprisingly, most of his analysis and the words he said aligned with what I said when I was asked the same question. Yes, he used some strong words that have generated a lot of reaction on the internet space, like saying that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and the federal government can never defeat Biafra. Now, he also went ahead to say that the continued delay tactics used by the federal government of Nigeria to ensure that Namde Kano is not released is only going to be counterproductive. I'd like you to take a look at the strong words of Professor Wally Shoinka before I come back to give you my thoughts as regards what I answered the person who asked me this question some time ago. Please, intentionally do want to drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let's get to know what you think about what Professor Wally Shoinka's take about the continued detention of Mazi in Namde Kano. How would you describe the civil war that Nigeria went through in 1997? What's, how would you describe it, Prof? Um, a waste, a total waste, a gross, costly error. It is an avoidable war. It was an unjust war. Uh, and I said so at the time, as you uh, probably know. And uh, I was appalled by the fact that we went to war so easily. I should explain that I believe very much in the right of self-determination. Otherwise, what? was independence all about what's the entire struggle for liberation on the african continent all about if it is not about the right of people to determine their own destiny and to find us fighting a war to preserve the demarcations inflicted on us by a foreign by foreign uh, intruders it was for me an act of abject mental enslavement. It was surrendering our will and the readiness to go to war and lose close to two million people to preserve something which was imposed on us by total aliens. was for me a humiliating fact. It is worse than a crime against ourselves. It was, it was a denial of who we were as creatures of reason, of, of volition self-determination. It made nonsense, in fact, of what I considered we were. So, uh, and the consequences are still with us till today. I, I know you've met some um, Chief Odume Ojuku when you, you met him when he was alive. Ojuku. Ojuku, yes. yes the General Ojuku. <clears throat> how, what, what, what was your, how would you describe him? Obviously, he's the one that led the Biafran, the Biafra war on the Biafra side of, of things. What, would you, what, kind of, what kind of a person was he when he was alive, your interaction with him? Yeah. A, a mixture. Uh, he was very conscious of his class. I mean, he belonged to an affluent. He had an affluent father who was a business person. He was sent to the best schools education, um, for education. Uh, I can't recall whether he went to Oxford. I think he went to Oxford. And when he came back, we met um, uh, as, a, as young people. He was older than I was, of course. And I, at the beginning, I didn't even like him at all. And that's before I went away. He was, he was very class conscious, yes. you know, rich, wealthy. He drove a sports car. Me, I trundled tr 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 <laughs> along on my father's ancient rally bicycle. I remember very well. Yes. And we used to meet at the same same area. We had mutual friends. Yes. But when he came back, and this is this this, uh, this happened so many young people. You can have a very frivolous, uncaring youth and an issue comes up 
which you know will affect you and there's a transformation and so he definitely had a, a sense he felt a sense of mission he became totally committed you know to the Biafran uh, cause uh, and uh, he tried to rise to that occasion as fast and as uh, determinedly as he could I thought for somebody without background and with that, those challenges, but he didn't do, do too badly. He made some terrible, uh, some terrible uh, decisions, I believe. He also had, uh, he had to accept responsibility for the entire uh, scenario going to war. Uh, after Aburi, there was a chance that the country could have moved more, a little bit more apart rather than stick with the kind of regimentation there. All the leadership at that time, in fact, were culpable. But in my view, uh, we on the federal side had a greater cult culpability. Yes. So, I mean, you talk of the decisions he made, they were terrible, sir. When you compare that to people like Namdekano today, Namdekano, People like uh, Namdekano trying to resurrect that Biafra spirit. What, what would you say or what would, you, what would your advice to people like Namdekano, the Yoruba nation, those people that are actually taking for this place from Nigeria, what would your advice or suggestion be to them from your experience? Well, the first thing I have to say is, is that I said at the time, and this was what got me <clears throat> into serious trouble, because um, they felt that by making such statement, in fact, it was singled out. I'm making such a statement, I was trying to demoralize the federal side and actively promoting the Biafran cause. Uh, what I said, and I wrote, I said, you cannot defeat Biafra. I said, and people thought I was actively promoting the Biafran cause. Uh, what I said, and I wrote, I said, you cannot defeat Biafra. I said, and people thought I was merely talking of the you know, they took a very simplistic approach to understanding that. I thought I was talking about the battlefield, on the battlefield. Well, that was involved as well. Because when the people are determined, they are willing to sacrifice anything to preserve their identity. When they feel they are on a righteous course, it's difficult to defeat them. Yes. Uh, if there's any, shall we say, military defeat, it's only temporary. The real issue remains unsolved. I mean, that's a lesson of history all over the world. Yes. And so when I made that uh, statement, I was saying to the Afra, that notion, that concept, and all that it involved, both, both antecedents and the present, and also, in fact, including the future, seeing what the people who are determined to go on their own, seeing what they could become, that is part and parcel, parcel of, the, of the cause. And when you have that kind of binding uh, combination of different causes, it's very difficult to, uh, to defeat them. And so uh, Kano, Namdi Kano, represents that, uh, that concept. He is one of the younger generation who inherited a burden of, uh, of defeat, of resentment, and a determination uh, in their view not to make the mistakes of even their predecessors. They have a new will, they have a new uh, understanding of history. The only problem I had with was the language which uh, Nandi Kanu used of uh, Radio Biafra. I listened to some of it, very uh, incendiary, yes. and also uh, disrespectful, I thought, of even his own people. I do agree with uh, this. The, uh, the language, I don't want to go into details, but all you have to do is listen to it. Uh, so, what is represented, in fact, I, I use a certain expression uh, in recent contributions. What we fought for, those of us who stood on that side, we fought for a Biafra of conscience. And for me, that's very critical. And people like uh, Namdi Kano should not, or IPOP for that matter, or Mass or whatever, should not act against what are core, uh, the core of our humanity, which is one of conscience. 
So, yes, the calls, for me, nothing surprised me at all. In fact, it just surprised me that it took so long that the, what you might call, the, the Biafra uh, resurrection to take place in terms yes. of consciousness. Nothing surprised me. Yeah, would you say there are similarities with the Yoruba nation? and the way they've been treated. So for example, you have the way Namikano was treated or he's being treated. Namikano is still in prison, DSL jail. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have the Yoruba nation leader. He was released a few months ago. So would you, would you say there are similarities or differences to these two movements? It's a mistake keeping Namikano in prison, I believe. Uh, Trump, in fact, kidnapped him. There's no other word in okay, the first place. That's true. He had a right to pursue his cause anywhere you want. He was never accused of physically bombing any place, yes. killing any place. Language, yes, was incited, no question yes. at all about that. But you don't arrest, you don't kidnap people. Uh, Buhari seemed to have um, an obsession with kidnapping people. You know, that's the, the street mark. <laughs> it's like couldn't fulfill himself unless it put somebody in a crate and brought them back. And I think that, politically speaking, uh, if they have any real charges against him, well, since he's in their hands, they should try him. All this technical postponements, delays, um, these tactics of just uh, of avoiding the basic issue. Uh, uh, for me, it's just counterproductive. But here's my take about it. When this guy asked me about the continued detention of Mazin Amrikan, I asked him a question. I said, in what organization, group, or association is it a taboo to announce your exit or your retirement from that group? Is it in the church? Or is it in a workplace? Or where would you say I'm no longer interested in being in this group? That people will say, no, you must be interested. It is only in a secret cult. Yes, that is the only place they have something to hide. And in a learning society, when a group of people come out and express their grievance, regardless of what it is, the onus is laid on those political class to sit them down and say, what exactly is the problem? Let's look at how to shift our grounds. If you're not satisfied at being together in this nation called Nigeria, we have to do something about it to ensure you're satisfied. Because we cannot say you must be in this nation when you're not satisfied in being in the nation. And the critical issues that have been put up by the Easterners in Nigeria must be looked at to ensure that they are okay to continually be in the nation. Not by saying, no, you must be here. No, you must do this. After all, we have freedom of expression, just like Professor Wole Shoyuka said earlier on in the video. The importance of analyzing the integrities of people's grievances, if it is not curbed, will always be in their heart. And one day, they will find every reason to disintegrate from the so-called open air concentration camp that you call a country. It's intentional. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let's get to know what you think about the continued detention of Mazi Namde Kanu and we shall continue to be here to serve you. Many thanks indeed to all our viewers and returning subscribers. We really do not take it lightly. My name again is Moses and this is TikTok TV. See you on our next video. Bye for now.